In today's video, we're going to check out the X14, the successor of the legendary X12 on the Mobula 8 Analog. We'll compare the differences on the bench and what's good and what's bad. Well, mostly good. <laughs> what? It's a Mobula 8! <laughs> And what is up awesome people? So in today's video, we're going to look at the X14, which is the successor of the legendary X12 flight controller. Now this X12 flight controller had been on the Mobula 7s, the Mobula 8s, and it's been around for a very, very long time. So today we're going to take a look at what sets it apart from its predecessor. Right out of the box, you have a packet of connecting cables, the XT30 connector, and the flight controller itself. Now taking a closer look at the flight controller, you can obviously see a couple of different things that's not similar to that of the X12 flight controller. Now the couple of major features of this flight controller is that 16 megabyte memory for black box, as well as the multiple UARTs that's available on this flight controller. One of the major things you'll notice is this connector that actually plugs into a USB-C, which of course is now more common in newer flight controllers these days. This flight controller also uses the new STM32G473MCU chip. The same 12M continuous current for its ESCs and an open VTX built in for up to 400 milliwatts and up to 2S LiPo input. Do check out the website happymodel.cn for the full pinouts and connection diagrams. Now the packet also provides you with an A30 LiPo connector and this is for that 1S build. But I have a spare 85mm frame and motors and props all ready, especially for this flight controller. So we're going to be building a Mobula 8. The motors of course are the standard EX1103 11000KV, especially for 2S. Do remember that if you're not getting the BNF, make sure the motors with the red dot is the one on the front right. Another thing that you want to take note is the fact that the camera for the X14 is totally different from the ones on the X12. As you can see, it is some smaller JST plug and this connects to the standard JST of a normal analog camera. So I'll be using the Cadex Ant and that's because the plug actually goes straight into the camera itself and that just saves me time from soldering. So I'm just going to plug that into the flight controller and that's about it. For the canopy, I'll be using the Mobile 7 canopy. Now I've ran out of uh, Happy Model crown antennas, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this RHCP Maple Wireless. So if you're wondering about the filters, PIDs and whatnot, just bear in mind that the flight controller actually comes pre-tuned from Happy Model. So I'm going to be flying it in its factory settings. The only thing that I will change is the Express LRS. And what you're going to do is just put the flight controller into Wi-Fi mode. And when the ELRS pops up, comes up, just add your binding phrase and you are set. Now just a quick polish off the lens to make sure that everything is clean. And we're done. So the Analog Mobula 8 is ready with the new X14 flight controller and it's now time to head to the field. Okay, so I'm going to make this quick because um, yeah, dark clouds are right there. And the sun is up only for a little while. This is all set up and ready. This is basically your Mobula 8 Analog with the new X14. And I hope you guys enjoy the video.
Well, the X14 sure does what it's supposed to do. For the successor of the X12, I think it is a great improvement, especially with the external USB-C port. All in all, this is pretty good. Maybe I shall do a 1S version and test it on a Mobulus 7. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Until the next one, thank you all for watching and see you guys again soon. Ciao!